All right, what's up, everyone? Kevin Phoenix here with the Illuminati at WonderCon 2022 with the executive producer and supervising director of The Boys Presents Diabolical, Giancarlo Volpe and Samir Rassiopa. Hello. Hey. Nice to meet you, Kevin. Thank, yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks for being for here. Um, first, I got first thing I got to ask. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's the response we wanted. We, we get that question a lot. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, Diabolical is the most insanely entertaining and all interpretations of the word insanely emphasized uh you know you you have a little shit monster you have a <laughs> you ha, you have you know and then you have like you know homelander's origins you have really dysfunctional relationship how did this like how did you just start coming up with these did you like put the call out or did you just already have it and ask people to help you with it oh uh, we put the call out yeah, it came uh, about working with Seth and Evan, Seth uh, Rogan, Evan Goldberg. Uh, They're like, hey, let's do a crazy boy spinoff, but let's go out to like awesome people we all like and love and ask them to contribute to the show. <laughs> so we went out to Aquafina, we went out to Andy Samberg, we went out to like uh, Elena and Elliot Glazer, and we just, and all these people said yes. And we're like, great, let's do a, like, what's your version of a short film set in the world of the boys? So did they pitch the, because a lot of this happened before I was hired, <clears throat> did they pitch the concepts for the short set? Yeah. That was kind of the... They totally, so we did like, so we reached out and Aquafina's like, I'd love to do one. We're like, great, can you talk in like two weeks? Bring your idea in? And she's like, sure. So then we all got on a call with Aquafina. She's like, okay, so... Hear me out. <laughs> just, let me get through it. What if someone had compound B on their, in their, in their poop, like, and that poop came to life. And we're like, go, go on. <laughs> and then she pitched the story. And the same, that's how it worked for all of the, all the episodes. They pitched us their take. And it was my, my, myself, Eric Kripke, who's a showrunner creator of The Boys, uh, Seth and Evan. And we just sort of talked about their idea until we were all happy with it. And then we're like, great, go off and write it. And then the rest is poop history, <laughs> I guess. All right, so I have to ask, season two? Oh, well, you should ask Amazon that. I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm hopeful. I would love to do CGI. Yeah. We both I mean, would love to do it. Right? We always, I always get questions about this when we do sort of like comic cons or mm -hmm. and, and the stock answer is if you watch it a lot, you know, yeah. like put it on, have it running in the background, you know, as you break do into your... people's houses, turn it on in other people's houses. <laughs> yeah. if you could, you know, I don't think that's illegal if you're just yeah. turning on the television, if you're just turning on there, but the more houses it's running in, that would be, that would be great. That would help us help us a lot get a second season. <laughs> okay, um, so you talk about the pitches, you, know, you reached out to them. They chose, as crazy as the show is, was it? Is there one that you said we can't do that? <laughs> we try not to say that. Yeah, you know? um, there really wasn't one that was like that we couldn't do. We were just like sometimes we're like, okay, what if we just like trim it a little bit, squeeze it in a little bit, and we just take out that part because that part we and it, it wasn't because it was like that's too much to to see it was because we, we couldn't animate it we couldn't do it in time <laughs> yeah it's more restricted by like can we can, can we draw it you know in a, in a short amount of time so you know sometimes i would wave those flags like oh can we make this easier to draw <laughs> but that's that's animation so the pitches outpace the animation somehow that's it's really yeah nice. the pitches well that's what you start with you start yeah. with just the pitches and you start with the scripts and then Giancarlo comes on board, well, even earlier than that, too, and starts looking at the material, and we start talking about how can we actually do it? Like, how can we make right. it? Because we only had, like, 10 months to, to make the whole show, Ooh, which is not It was not so long. fast. That's, that's a really fast turnaround. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hypothetically, for season two, if you, uh, uh, what other mediums <clears throat> would you hope to take, and what kind of, uh, to take on? You know, you had kind of the, the Animaniacs, Looney Tunes, you had, um, kind of anime style, cutesy anime style, then, you know, American animation. What other mediums would you like to, you know, partake for season two? If, if, if Ooh, it's a good question. I mean, it'd be fun to do something in CG. Um, CG takes longer, you know, I, I know that everyone knows that, but it's it's even more steps to the process. So, but we'd also, you know, there's some crazier stuff we could do too. Like, well, I'd like to, I think the promise of Diabolical is that it's all new every season. If we do another season, all like nothing, we don't repeat ourselves ever. So it'd be like, let's do a live action segment. Let's do a puppet show. Let's do a theater <laughs> production. Let's do an opera. Let's do a garage sale. I don't know. Like, let's just open it up <laughs> yes. and do a bit of everything. Podcast? No. <laughs> okay, settle down. No, just... Oh, a pot. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. You just have Homelander there, just like, yeah, I didn't like that. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Uh, speaking of, speaking of uh, season one, though, not going back, uh, you know, not repeating yourself or anything, but um, the how did Andy Samberg pitch this amazing <laughs> Korean horror? Like, I was watching the episode, and all of a sudden, I saw the Andy Samberg, like that, you know, the themes, the, the animation, like it all felt like you know straight from korea and then <laughs> right. see Andy, Andy sandberg i'm just like he was like you know dick in the box like <laughs> like that start, it's, with it's start with that but nothing like it <laughs> <laughs> um so that's an interesting question um to, to andy's credit he wanted to do a serious story about fighting cancer like yeah. using compound v to fight cancer um the korean angle was kind of added Later, um, when we hired the director, Steve On, who is Korean American, I, yeah. I, I forget, the, I mean, he's, he's Korean. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were just talking about like how to visualize the short and I was, and at some point it came up in conversation like, do you want to make the characters Korean? Like, you know, like, why not? And, uh, you know, Steve's very mellow dude and he was kind of like, yeah. Yeah, I could do that, <laughs> which I think is his extreme enthusiasm. You know, he's just a just a, a chill guy, and um, suddenly, like you know, uh, you know, sent us designs. You were like, "Oh my god, this is perfect!" Like we all loved it, and um, you know, we had to go back though and change uh, Sun Sun He's name. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, <clears throat> you know, obviously, uh, I'm not Korean. John Carlos not Korean, so we let Steve mm -hmm. lead that when we decided to make that switch we let him sort of run with that and we just try to support him as much as we can which meant going back and just making some small changes on the script so that supported his vision of making it more korean centric and then we just try to again support him by hiring a korean composer uh hiring a korean animation studio getting korean designers in there and trying to really have that be the focal point of the episode so like John Carl said, that wasn't exactly how Andy envisioned it. But mm -hmm. once we started talking to him about it, he was wholeheartedly like, yes, this sounds amazing. Let's yeah. do that. That's awesome. Yeah, <clears throat> the collaboration process to develop and grow into something so, like, yeah, it's like profound. Because, yeah, that one, like, a lot of them before that, you know, it's funny. Especially that one, you just had the uh, Aisha Tyler episode. And then you go into that and it's like mood shift, like complete, you know. Total like, mood yeah. shift. Yeah. yeah. Um, how important was it to kind of do it in these like 15 minute vignettes? Was that always a plan or was it kind of like just the way it was designed or what you were allowed to do or yeah, in, in that thing? Uh, well, it was always going to be shorts. Uh, and we were always talking about sort of like 11 to 13 minutes. And really it was just that's as much as we could get done in 10 yeah. months. If we made them any longer, I don't think we, I think we'd right. still be working on them right now, right? Because of our fast turnaround, it was a good boundary to set, like keep it about this long and then it'll be humanly producible. Um, but I think it was kind of fun, you know, cause uh, a lot of like kids animation are, are, are uh, 11 minute um, shorts. So mm -hmm. I was familiar with that. Like I'd, I'd worked on some mm -hmm. shorter stuff like on Star versus Forces of Evil on Disney. So, you know, it was very familiar like format. I was like, oh yeah, you could totally tell a, a satisfying story in about 11 minutes. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, we originally wanted to do 10 of them was the original goal. And we just, as we started to look at the schedule, we're like, that's too many. It's too many. We will die. It's too many. Too many. We have to go down to eight. So I appreciate that. So are there two pitches just waiting in the wings? No, actually, I wish there were. So we'd be sort of ready, raring to go for a, a possible season two. No, we, we cut it down to eight as we were going out oh. to people. So we just didn't go oh, out man. to anybody else after eight people but said But maybe yes. we should start like a like an urban legend that they do like exist. Two lost episodes. And they're like, you know, <laughs> crazy. Oh, like, that'd be pretty good. Like the episodes you weren't allowed like to Like Obama see. wrote one of them. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very specific example. He's a huge fan of the boys. <laughs> that's true. I, we're not even kidding. Yeah, like that's not. Uh, that's that's absolutely one hundred percent true. <laughs> we I'll, did get a, a list early on of celebrities who love the boys, and I think it was just kind of a little, a little like nudge, you know, especially when we were talking about voice actors we were going to hire and and and, and uh, you know celebrities we were going to reach out to to write. Mm -hmm. And Obama's on the list. <laughs> so yeah. I love the idea of like, hey guys, I got a I got a great idea here. Uh, that's my my terrible. <laughs> Obama impersonation. That's, that's, that's like seven out of ten. I'll take it. That's, that's pretty good. I, yeah. uh, I wanted to ask about um, your episode specifically. That scene where Homelander just everything kind of just flashes in front of him. Everything's just cut, like all the best, and then it cuts out, and then that actually happened. It kind of is. Was that 
inspired by taken or like built off of that scene in season two where he kind of has that going on and he imagines just eye blasting the crowd is that like yeah, a little bit. Like, it's a bit of, like, disassociation, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and, you know, this is an early thing where he's fighting with these feelings inside him and he doesn't know quite at the moment what's real, what's not. And then suddenly he wakes up and he's like, oh, my God, this, that all happened. All those thoughts I was thinking occurred. So it's kind of a reference to that, yeah. All right. All right. Just the last question. Uh, so kind of just personal thing. Like, which one of these was, like, personally the most messed up one that you could think of? Like, which one was, like... <laughs> Yeah, like that's a demented vision, like, and that's why that's my favorite. Like, well, I, wait, what's yours? Oh man, how do you choose? I mean, gosh, there's a couple. There's a couple moments where I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, like I, I feel like when uh, when Black Mar snaps that woman's neck at the end, I still get a little like, oh, come on, like he could have done, he could have done something noble, but he was like, no peace. He's part of the seven. <laughs> so that one sometimes makes me wince. Uh, for me, I think it's a, it's a toss up between Aquafina's episode and Justin <laughs> Roiland's episode. Uh, right. You know, those are both right on the edge. Like Just hers is, joke. Yeah, exactly. Hers is like super cute and funny, but also it's about a talking piece of poop. Uh, his is about a character with boobs for a face. So <laughs> yeah. it's like you can choose between those two, I think. Somehow Ariola's cute to me, though. Like, She's I, super cute. I think it like, like, like maybe she defies all poop logic. Like she kind of smells like baby powder. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that before. <laughs> I, can't. I, I have. Uh, it's, that's stuck with me now. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time. We just love the series. Crossing our fingers, promoting everyone to turn it on so we can get a season two. Um, and yeah, just thanks for coming by and have a great rest of the con. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for having, having us, us, Kevin. Yeah, Thank this you. was great. <laughs>